पीपीटी हाँ मेरा नहीं हुआ एक्चुअली स्लाइड्स प्लीज सो लेट मी वंस अगेन वेलकम यू फॉर द वन हंड्रेड फिफ्टीन टाइम टू दिस थर्सडे म्यूजिंग इवेंट वेर विल हैव टू वेरी वेरी स्पेशल स्पीकर्स अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक एंड इट विल बी आई थिंक मोर रिलैक्सिंग टूडे लेट्स होप लेट्स सी वट वी गेट इन द एंड the uh, uh, people will be kept on mute mode the panelists can unmute themselves whenever they want uh, the questions are invited in the chat box the moderator will take it up and put it to the presenters next slide please full screen and next slide Uh, Shreya, with the next slide. Oh, right, sir. Just a minute. Shreya, can you put it on the PPT mode? Right, some more for that. Ah, some some technical issues. Good evening, Doctor Isaac. More Isaac, sir. आप से मिलते रहते हैं यहाँ ना. कहीं ना कहीं आप म्यूटेड हो सर गुड इवनिंग डॉक्टर सोपन फती गुड टू सी यू आई थिंक एनेबल एडिटिंग शुड बी डन यस एनेबल एडिटिंग शुड बी डन देन इट विल गो फॉर फुल स्क्रीन मोड एनेबल कर दीजिए उसके बाद वो फुल स्क्रीन में चला जाएगा यस यस सो आई 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 एम अलिम विथ परमिशन ओवर टू यू ओके सो वेलकम दिस एपिसोड ऑफ थर्सडे इज रनिंग बिकॉज ऑफ योर ग्रेस बिकॉज ऑफ इनवॉल्वमेंट एंड बिकॉज ऑफ रिप्लेसिंग dear all friends and we have with us two vibrant moderators dr alim siddiqui and dr amit patel so next slide please dr amit patel so professor of psychiatry in high tech medical college and direct council member of ips and a very much well known popular young member of ips and dr alim siddiqui professor of psychiatry iras lucknow medical college and please next slide please and he is the treasurer of indian psychiatric society he has the treasury of ips all the all reaches of ips with him welcome dr ali and today's respected chairperson dr next please dr rupinder kapoor md psychiatry in 1981 always been in private practice except for 6 years service in india keen interest in addiction medicine and psychiatrist and psychiatric patients right sharing books and other academic material relevant to psychiatrists and is very popular is very vibrant and we have got dr rupinder kapoor with us from parwara next please dr asis srivastava from goa He is a senior resident doctor for csr institute of psychiatry and human behavior goa lecturer in psychiatry maharashtra institute of mental health pune maharashtra assistant professor in psychiatry kasturba medical college manipal karnataka assistant professor in institute of psychiatry and human behavior goa presently professional membership and positions life fellow of ips life fellow of the psychiatric society of goa life fellow of indian association of geriatric mental health life member of ima and executive of ips western branch president of the goa psychiatric society past executive committee member of ima goa ijp editorial board as special field editor assistant editor for annals of indian psychiatry publications and presentation 20 research papers in index your view national and international journals awards young psychiatrist award at which joint conference of ips october 2000 welcome dr asis welcome dr pindar kapoor 
from hands or lords, the meeting is in your hands. Please proceed. Dr. Rupinder, you want to take? Uh, yes. Uh, let's go, get on with the proceedings. I have with me Dr. Sanjeev Jain. He is a senior professor, Department of Psychiatry and Molecular Genetics Laboratory. I have heard much about him and everything is so positive that I was keen to meet him. Uh, let it be online this time, but personally, it would be a pleasure to meet him anytime. He is from Nimhans, adjunct faculty, National Center of Biological Sciences, NCBS, TIFR. Many aspects of genetics and genomics with reference to psychiatric and neurological diseases. That seems to be his special interest. He'll be speaking on history of psychiatry today. Welcome, Dr. Jain. Yes, sir. Next slide, please. Uh, I'll take it. I'll take it, Dr. Yeah, yeah, Alok yeah, yeah. Sarin. It's been always a pleasure to hear to Dr. Alok Sarin. I have heard a few. I had opportunity to meet him quite a few times, and I've listened to Dr. Sanjeev Jain also many, many times. Uh, history basically is not the past, but a map of the past drawn from a particular point of view. And to be useful in the modern for the modern traveler like us, we the young or this generation psychiatrist, and the map in our field will be chalked out as, as for us today by the two stalwarts in psychiatry, Dr. Sanjeev Jain and Dr. Palok Sari. Over to you, sirs. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so uh, I will start. I will start with first. Uh, Please stop the slide share. Thank uh, you. Stop the slide share and maybe Sanjeev can uh, uh, yeah. start the other slide. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Sanjeev. So uh, we are going to do a slightly different uh, uh, sort of program today. Uh, but I think what we will do is we'll start with, uh, you know, this is the 115th uh, edition of uh, the Thursday Musings, and we are both delighted uh, to be here. Sanjeev has, of course, been in the Thursday Musings before as well. Uh, and but I must say that, you know, for uh, this program, which has been going on for the last two years now, uh, it's been it's been it's been amazingly uh, popular. It's been extremely well received, and both of us are delighted today to be part of this. Thank you very much, Dr. Tufan Pati. Thank you very much, Dr. Alim and Dr. Amrit Patajoshi, for inviting us to be here today. So the way that we've planned this <clears throat> is not really a, a full didactic presentation, but more of a conversation between uh, Sanjeev and myself. And what we're going to do is talk about a little bit about uh, the history uh, and the interplays between history and uh, historical event, shall I say, and mental illness and and the people with mental illness so we are going to make a few pit stops on this journey we will start with 1857 and before 1857 the establishment of what we think of as contemporary psychiatry the institutions the mental hospitals we will as I said, start with the events around the mutiny. We will talk very briefly about uh, the First World War and what, in what ways it impacts the histories of mental illness and the care of the people with mental illness uh, in India. We'll talk very briefly about the Second World War. We'll talk about the big events of independence and partition, the uh, ways uh, that it affected and impacted people with mental illness. And we will talk very briefly about 1962. So we are going to do a, a broad bird's eye view, but look at it from the other direction, uh, 
from the, the way that people with mental illness experienced this. So I'm going to hand it over to Sanjeev to start the conversation. Sanjeev, mm -hmm. over to you. And yeah, Can you please, screen, please? yeah, put it on full screen. And uh, right. uh, yeah, right. perfect. So uh, psychiatry, as we practice it now, basically began begins with uh, the starting of our mental hospitals in uh, India, which was started sometime towards the end of 1800, uh, the end of the 18th century. By the middle of, by around 1770s, some hospitals have been existing in Patna, in wherever the East India Company established its rule in 1757. Uh, but uh, but by the time they consolidated their rule, for example, in Madras, there is a specific need to set up a hospital for the reception of the native poor. Now, this is the first time that the native poor are being thought about in psychiatry. And it is very important that this is the first time that medicine itself is being opened up to a completely uh, non-denominational space, irrespective of religion, caste, etc. A hospital will be a hospital. Before this, uh, in 1794 itself, as a letter from 1794 shows, Valentin Connolly laid before us the proposal for establishing a hospital for insane patients and the hospital board having recommended for serious attention, how extremely beneficial it would be. The next page goes on to say, affording security against the perpetration of those acts and being sensible ourselves. And therefore we need to, uh, we are, have great pleasure in sanctioning an asylum. Uh, so by, by the end of the last decade of the 18th uh, century, in the 1790s, the fact that asylums had to be established wherever British ruled becomes commonplace. And over the next 40, 50 years, wherever the British forces went, they are not forces actually, they are the East India Company. Whichever parts the East India Company took under its control, one must remember that the East India Company had people like Malthus and the mill and uh, Stuart Mill as their advisors. So the fact that uh, the company has to also look after the welfare of the people under its charge is a, is a stated aim of the governance of the East India Company. So they have to set up hospitals, they have to set up dispensaries, and they have to establish these facilities for the people who they are now in charge of. So by, by 1850, we have hospitals throughout all the way till Benares, till, Be till Bareilly. We have dispensaries going up to uh, the Komao Hills, uh, up to Sakleshpur in the, in the Madras Presidency on the West Coast. And of course, we have the Bombay Presidency and Gujarat uh, region filled with dispensaries and things like that. And uh, although we don't know the beginnings of the, of the Delhi Hospital, we know something that it did exist because the committees of inquiry, which were held up, with, I mean, as usual, mental hospitals are set up. They are thought to be bad. Commissions of inquiry are established. Commission of inquiry are going on in London. Then they say we must do them in India also. A commission of inquiry set up in 1818, submits a report. And uh, Lok will take you forward as to how the asylum of Delhi uh, looked and behaved like in the <clears throat> early part of the 19th century. Uh, so in 1857, there is a hospital in Delhi. <clears throat> you know, and this is uh, it came as a little bit of a surprise to us because all the existing <clears throat> stories of uh, mental hospital psychiatry uh, actually, or mental hospital psychiatry in India, actually start with saying that the first hospital in Delhi uh, starts with the uh, hospital for mental diseases in Chhatra. But the fact of the matter is that there is a hospital in Delhi in 1857, and we have we have a lot of archive, uh, a lot of archival material uh, to locate the exact uh, place of the hospital. It's just outside the gates of uh, Old Delhi, outside the walls, outside Delhi Gate, actually. Uh, so it's roughly where, for those of you who are familiar with Delhi. It's where Maulana Azad Medical College e exists today. Remember that the river, as is shown on the map, the river Yamuna doesn't flow where it flows now. At that time, the river was much closer. The river has shifted. So the river is there. This is where 
the where the arrow shows is where the lunatic asylum and the jail complex uh, <clears throat> uh, exists on the 11th of May 1857. And the significance of the date will not uh, elude you. This is the day after the mutiny starts. The mutiny starts on the 10th of May. The mutineers are approaching the city of Delhi. The first Sarkari building that they see is the mental hospital. And of course, the hospital is ransacked. So exactly 60 years after the sacking of the Bastille, in France, in Paris, the first event, the first act of rebellion in the city of Delhi is the ransacking of the mental hospital uh, outside the gates of the walled city in Delhi. And while the sacking of the Bastille is celebrated till today, uh, the ransacking of the hospital is something that actually has been forgotten. Uh, the ransacking of the hospital in Delhi is something that has been forgotten. But anyway, <clears throat> the, the question is, what is it that happens? And we can either look at it as a ransacking of the hospital, or we can look at it as a, a release of the people who are in the hospital. There's a lot of record that is there. So there's this wonderful monograph which is uh, written by Major Lodge Patch about the mental hospitals of the Punjab. And remember that at this point of time, Delhi is part of the Punjab presidency. So it's very much part of the, uh, of the Punjab in that sense. So there's a lot of record uh, <clears throat> which tells us what it is that is happening at this point of time. What is happening at this point of time is actually quite an interesting and very fascinating because the hospital is ransacked. The 250 people who are part of this hospital are not heard of again. They probably die in all the violent events that engulf the city of Delhi after that. But there are some records which tell us that there is a, ah, this is a picture mm -hmm. of the Red Fort before uh, 1820. It has nothing to do with the mental hospital. We've actually, Sanjeev and myself, have only put it in because it's such a beautiful picture of the Red Fort uh, in 1820. Uh, can I have the next one, please, Sanjeev? Yeah. So there is, as we said, there's a lot that is happening at this time uh, and there are records of the, uh, of the Delhi hospital. And I will give it to Sanjeev to tell you a little bit about what was happening in the Delhi hospital. But that's before and after 1857. Sanjeev. So 1857, as we know, Delhi <clears throat> Delhi is taken over by the during the first fall of independence or the mutiny. And it is besieged by forces. Uh, uh, the nearest force is that of Nicholson, who is in what is now Pakistan, near Lahore, beyond Lahore. And he gets together a band of soldiers. Nicholson is quite famous because he is called Nicholsaini because of his very uh, tempestuous nature and very foolhardy bra uh, bravery, he has actually created a cult around himself who call themselves Nikhil Sainis who will follow him to battle till death, et cetera, et cetera. So, this, uh, so when he starts off his, uh, his journey uh, from, uh, from uh, Punjab, from the Western Punjab, he is accosted by a soldier who says that uh, you should, the English should leave India and that they should be, India should be independent. The shooting is passed off by his other uh, friends, by the other people, that the soldier was thought to be in a madman with a religious delusion caused by a preacher in the hills and a jihadi. So the hills of Northwest Pakistan have always been, or what is now Northwest Pakistan, have always been fruitful um, originators for notions of jihad and madmen and religious preachers. So nothing much has changed. So he comes all the way, and of course, Nicholson is killed in the siege of Delhi, and his graveyard and the Nicholson's garden still stands outside Kashmiri Gate. But uh, there are many, many uh, things that happen. Uh, people get, uh, obviously, uh, the king is moved. This build, the photograph below is a little, whatever, very small building where the king is imprisoned, not imprisoned, 
the British visitors, he's uh, made some kind of a spectacle for Brit visiting British tourists. And he sits on a charpai with one of his wives and recites poetry, probably Na Kisi Kya Ka Noor Hoon, which the British pass off as soulful ditties, which are quite meaningless because they don't understand Urdu at all, or at least poetic Urdu, at least the soldiers don't. So that is the place where, the, where he moves from the magnificent red fort. He's moved into this little building and made a spectacle. But the point of the mutiny is that every soldier must get a bonus. And bonus is sub quite substantial. And Irish soldier claims that the government has stolen the bounty pay, that bonus, and spent it on buying oranges. And he converts to Islam, announced to the Jama Masjid that the Russians were on the way, and that all Muslims <laughs> to join the jihad to help and drive the British out of Kabul and help their entry of the Afghans into Delhi. So again, uh, the, common, the contemporary ideas are not uh, very different. So the Russians are still on their way, and of course the jihad is still going on. So, but this, but the British are so upset about this because the people in Delhi uh, complain that uh, when people convert from Islam to Christianity, you celebrate it. When they convert from Christianity to Islam, you call them mentally ill and lock them in, in mental hospitals. So he's locked up in a mental hospital. He sends letters back and forth to his supporters. These letters are read by a secret police. So a secret police exists at that time. And then he shifted to Bombay and moved back to England to avoid any further communal violence. So all these kinds of funny things go on. And the hospital is very much part of the political and the civic life of uh, Delhi. Alok. So there's a lovely book. There's a lovely book, which is called Besieged, uh, which talks about the letters uh, that have been found about what is happening in the time of the immediately following the mutiny. And, and there's a wealth of information there about what it is uh, that is happening. Uh, this book is by a gentleman called Mahmoud Farooqi, which you might have heard of. But there are little bits that we found completely fascinating. So there is a little hospital. There is a lunatic. The, the original hospital, which was outside the gates of the city, has been ransacked. That never becomes a mental hospital again. That becomes a jail subsequently. The hospital itself, according to Lodge Patch and his reports, uh, is set up at various places. We are not quite sure in August where it is, but there is a hospital as this letter tells us. And the problem is that this is a city which is under siege. This is a city in major turmoil. And this is a city which is very troubled. And there is a mental hospital. It has staff and the staff won't stay in the hospital. So the baker keeps running away. So there is a plea to the police inspector, the Thanadar, saying that please send the baker back to the mental hospital because the, there is nobody to make the chapatis. And similarly, there is a lot of other information about people who are found wandering in the streets. There is, there is, a, there is a series of photographs and there is a very nice picture of the prison of the palace of Delhi, which is probably where the mental hospital uh, is located. Because traditionally, mental hospitals and prisons have always been together, you know, uh, or really uh, immediately adjacent uh, to each other. Can I have the next one, please, Sanjay? A lot of chaos is happening. Uh, in the city of Delhi at this point of time, the mutineers take over and many uh, acts of violence happen. Many Europeans are slaughtered. This is a photograph of the interior of the Red Fort where apparently 49 uh, uh, Europeans were, were killed on the 15th of May. So this is three days after the mutiny is happening. Can I have the next one, please? And there's a very interesting side story here. So this, as all of you would see, is a picture of Mirza Ghalib. Mirza Ghalib, the quintessential poet of Delhi. And the story of Mirza Ghalib is this, that Mirza Ghalib has a brother. His brother uh, has a mental illness. And he's had a mental illness for a very, very long time. 
he's taken, I mean, and he's kept at home. He's not taken anywhere. And this is a time of, of curfew in Delhi and interesting things are happening. This is after the, the Europeans have taken control uh, back from the Indian revolutionaries again. And the, the Europeans are now in charge. Curfew is established. The Hindus are asked to move out of the city for a month. The Muslims are asked to move out for two months. And it is during this curfew that Mirza Ghalib's brother dies. And Ghalib, in one of his letters, talks about what is it that happened. And Ghalib, being Ghalib, his language, even in translation, tells you why he is such a, a, a great poet. In fact, many people think that, you know, Mirza Ghalib's work, uh, and he writes as much in Farsi as he does in Urdu, but many people think that his letters itself, and he is a prolific letter writer, and, and there are many references to his brother. So he writes on the 19th of October, a Monday once again, that day whose name should be struck from the lists of the week's days. In the first watch of the day, my brother's doorkeeper, with downcast face and disheveled hair, brought me the joyous news of my brother's death. And he goes on and he talks about how difficult it is to arrange for that burial. But what this is telling us is that even in this time, in so there is a mental hospital, but if you are privileged, if you have the resource, then you can manage to keep the person with mental illness at home. If you are not, then you use the services of the institution. So whenever planning for services happens, obviously different services will be have, have to be planned for different people. Can I have the next one, please? So right. this is what is happening at the time of the mutiny. We move from the mutiny or the first war of independence, depending on which way we tell that story. And we move to further ahead and we, we are going to take a, a flying leap to uh, around the First World War and Ranchi in the First World War. Sanjeev. So Berkeley Hill is a, is a, <clears throat> is a graduate uh, from UCL and Oxford. As he proudly says, he stood last in his medical school and he just about scraped into the Indian Medical Service. He was sent off to fight in the First World War in the African campaign, got a medal for his uh, activities, and he got a uh, citation for his activities uh, signed by Winston Churchill. He wrote back an angry letter saying he should have got a medal instead of just a citation. And anyway, then he's sent off uh, <clears throat> because he's part of the Indian Medical Service, he's attached to the British Indian Army, he comes over to India. And uh, after a rather colorful career, and then he joins, uh, he's put in charge of the Ranchi Mental Hospital. Now, Ranchi Mental Hospital is an anachronism. The British have wondered for 100 years or more as to what to do with European lunatics. If they are let out on the street, they bring down the izzat of the white race. In the mental hospitals, they refuse to obey any discipline. They refuse to work. And they don't take kindly to being in the same place as the uh, brown patients and they have to give them special food. So all in all this try they, and plus by that time racism has become quite a big thing in the early 20th century. And finally the British agree that a mental hospital for white people has to be built in Ranji. That's the only hospital which exclusively for white people in the whole of India. And therefore, but by the time he reaches, Berkeley Hill reaches there, it is quite run down. And then he tries to improve it and all of you are and you can read about Ranchi Mental Hospital it's in great detail, but Berkeley Hill is very self-confessed admirer of Sigmund Freud. And he is very, he is very much interested in uh, psychoanalysis, in sexuality, in disinhibited behavior. He comes from a long, illustrious family with multiple Victorian, I mean, the postage stamp is invented by his grandfather, the postage stamp itself. And there are statues to Hill all over England, the grandfather, and therefore he's a bit of a, a loose cannon. Then he starts with a 
uh, in the middle of all this, he gets, oh, one slide has come off for some reason. So in the middle of this, there is a riot in Jamshedpur. This is the, the famous tribal uprising, the on, on Arau uprising, in which the person claims that he has now become, uh, he has been instructed by the, uh, by the gods that he has to drive the British people out. And therefore, a tribal uprising is necessary to drive the white people out. This combines itself with the threat of strikes in the Jamshedpur steel plant, which has been set up by the Tatars. Faced with this, the Russian revolution has just happened. Uprisings are occurring all over Europe. So the British get concerned that this kind of peasant uprising and a workers uprising may threaten the mental hospital. And therefore they allot a machine gun to the mental hospital to protect itself. Berkeley Hill finds out from one of the soldiers that he has been an expert machine gunner. And he hands over the machine gun to him and tells him to maintain it and stand at the door of the machine gun. <laughs> when the local, whatever army official comes he, for inspection as to what they have done with the machine gun, he's very impressed that this has been done. And he says, uh, "How? who's done all this? So he said, here is the man and he steps forward and gives a salute. And he said, but who, who is he? He says, he's a patient. And he says, you've given the machine gun to one of your patients. He said, what best? He's, he's suspicious, he's irritable, and he's paranoid. Who better can you trust a machine gun with? And with, with that, <laughs> with that, uh, as you can see, the general thinks that he's an imbecile and he walks off and takes off the, uh, the um, machine gun. Berkeley Hill doesn't end there. He continues to live there. This, is, this incident happens in 1919. While on a trip to Kerala, he finds somebody who's very attractive. And he stands outside the door, outside her door, till she agrees to marry him, a lady from Kerala. And then he goes back to Ranchi and has uh, four or five children, uh, one of whom dies in, as a pilot in the First World War. One of them becomes the lead voice of the All India Radio, uh, along with F.S. Talyar Khan and uh, Amin Sayani. So he's of that generation. And his children uh, continue to uh, be in in India, Assam, and, and in England. But during the 1941 Quit India riots, he is beaten up uh, being, for being a Britisher. And he tells them he has no intention of leaving. He has served the country and he has no intention of going anywhere. And he wants to rename the hill that he lives on, at, uh, which is called Tatsilvai, as Berkeley Hill Gunj, because he has no intention of going anywhere. He might as well call, you might as well call Ranchi Berkeley Hill Gunj, because this is where I am and this is where I live. So he is also the main mentor for Dr. D. Satyanand, who, as we all know, becomes the first professor of psychiatry at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. So Berkeley Hill has a huge impact on the way psychiatry is thought of. He writes articles on the psychology of terrorists, stroke, independence fighters, and he tells the government that there is nothing mentally wrong with the I mean, although you want me to imagine that these terrorists are mentally uh, different, there's nothing wrong with them. He writes on the psychoanalysis of the Sari. He writes on the psychoanalysis of, obviously, of Indian uh, sanitary habits, and that has a huge impact in Bengal. The whole film, uh, PK, is based on Berkeley Hill's writings. So it's a, he's had a huge cultural impact in the, in the, few, in the years to come. Uh, of course, by the time the First World War comes, he's dead and gone. But uh, what also happens in the First World War is that all psychiatry is taught, as we all know from our textbooks, psychiatry in the 19th century is Alzheimer, Nissel, Workhau, Kreplin, Bloiler, it's all Europe. So the, and, the, and the Germans in the middle of the First World War set up an institute of psychiatry in Munich headed by Emil Kreplin. And when the war ends, the British find it very odd that they should continue to send their doctors back to Germany, with whom they fought a very bloody war for five years, for to training in psychiatry. Although the doctors are good friends and they, have, they go back and forth, but uh, war is war and politics is politics. So this insist that all doctors in the empire must now be trained in psychiatry and everybody must come to London to learn psychiatry. So around the same time, 
people from everywhere in India, you know, uh, Narona from Bangalore, Parsuram from Madras, uh, Banarsi Das from Agra, about 20 psychiatrists are chosen from all over India and sent to the Maudsley to train in psychiatry. And they all come back by 1922, 25, 1930, so that by the mid 1930s, there are about 35 psychiatrists who have been trained in England at the DPM, become members of the Royal College and are now in charge of mental hospitals all over India. Before the First World War, Indian doctors are not allowed to become superintendents. They can be deputy superintendents, they can be medical, uh, whatever, pack, uh, staff, but they cannot be superintendents. That changes dramatically in the, in the first world, after the First World War. And by the mid 30s, almost all the hospitals are managed by Indian doctors, almost always trained in the UK. And that's where we lead to the Second World War. So, so just to step back a little bit, uh, the 1930s is a very fascinating time, especially for Ranchi, hmm. because there are two hospitals pretty much across the road from each other, as they still are. One is the European Mental Hospital, which is run by Berkeley Hill. Berkeley Hill has, in a sense, blotted his copybook because he has got married to an Indian woman. The Indian Mental Hospital is run by a gentleman called Dhunji Boy, who's a Parsi. And the both the hospital and Dhunji Boy and Berkeley Hill are both fascinating men in their own right. Both are prolific writers. Both have a huge influence. Uh, and as you can see, you know, when Sanjeev and I start talking about Dhunji Boy and Berkeley Hill, this can go on forever, but we will move on now from the 30s, the period between the wars, to the period which is approaching the Second World War or during the Second World War. The way that the Second World War touches India is in the Northeast, is, is the area around Burma. There are a lot of Indians there. The People are coming in. This is a, I apologize for the slide. It's a rather busy slide. This is a book that was Sanjeev actually found in the Bangalore club. It's called Spitfire Singh. And this is the one record that we have found of the mental hospital in Burma. It's in a place called Tadagali, which is just outside Rangoon in a place called Insane, I-N-S-E-I-N. -E the pun is completely unintended. Where So the, there's a mental hospital in Insane. And if anybody has read the papers today, you will have seen that there is a that, that, that there was a bomb blast in the jail at Insane, which was reported in the newspapers this morning. So this is where the hospital was. And the hospital is on the road which leads from Rangoon to Imphal, the main road which cuts across the subcontinent, where, if you remember, is where the long march took place. Incidentally, my grandmother, who was born in Burma, also walked back from Rangoon to Calcutta. But anyway, so the hospital is there and it has about 800 people in the mental hospital. The superintendent of the mental hospital is an Indian. The Japanese armies are approaching. And they are worried about what it will, what it is that will happen uh, to the patients in the mental hospital when the Japanese come. So the superintendent, as an act of charity, releases all these people. And they run smack into the advancing Japanese army. And again, I mean, the, the results are not good. Uh, the patients are gesticulating and mimicking the, the uh, actions of the Japanese soldiers. But I, from whatever reports we have, they all get slaughtered, all 800 of them. So this is an evacuation of the mental hospital or a release, which is similar to what happened in 1857. That mental hospital was evacuated. The 250 people there probably died. The 800 people who are there in the 
hospital in Rangoon and are released by this gentleman uh, all die here. This, the gentleman here in question, apparently, again, the source is the same uh, book, uh, is where, and he's, he, he's actually severely criticized. And from the account that we have, he apparently kills himself, uh, you know, uh, after this. So this is actually a very uh, uh, sad story of an evacuation. Can I have the next one, Sanjeev? No, just, just to add a point that, you know, at this point of time, as the British Empire expanded, uh, the idea was that east of the Suez till Singapore, the Indian Medical Service was in charge. So hospitals all the way to Bandar Abbas, to Iraq, to Singapore, to Rangoon, had to give the reports to Calcutta or Delhi. And the healthcare of this entire region was the responsibility of the Indian Medical Corps, Indian Medical Service. It's only Rangoon, I mean, Burma was partitioned from India sometime in the 30s, but the hospital was still managed by Indian doctors, same way as Singapore was managed mainly by Indian doctors uh, right, till, uh, right till it fell. So okay. then we come obviously to the partition and then yeah. look. So we move on. We move on to 47. Where is the major partitioning, the act of independence and what accompanies it, which is the partitioning? We've written a lot about this. I'm sure all of you have read. Uh, this is what uh, the iconic story by... Uh, Manto, Sadat Hassan, Hassan Manto is based on, the story is called Tuba Tek Singh. By a strange coincidence, Manto's birthday is the day that the hospital in Delhi was ransacked. It's the 11th of May, but that's actually just a coincidence. But what happens in Lahore is that in 1950, 450 non-Muslim patients are taken from the Lahore Mental Hospital. 282 of these people are accommodated in the Amritsar Mental Hospital. Uh, the rest have, are sent to the, uh, the Indian Mental Hospital, which is at that time the interprovincial uh, hospital in, uh, in Ranchi. And there are 233 patients uh, Muslim patients from across uh, the country. Uh, letters are sent as far as Tezpur and uh, Nagpur across all the mental. There are about uh, 28 or 29 uh, hospitals in, in India at this point of time. Letters are sent to all of them and 233 patients are sent across the border in the other direction. It's also a fascinating little snippet of information that not only mental patients of mental hospitals are exchanged, people in jails are also exchanged. So on what that basis, what that basis for that exchange is, or the selection of that patient population is, uh, we, we have actually no idea. We have not been able to find the records. But it was, in a sense, an epiphanic realization for, for us that the iconic story, which is Toba Tek Singh, uh, which, you know, we are taken as a metaphor of, of Manto's extremely rich imagination, uh, is actually based on fact. As a point of fact, uh, Manto had actually spent time, he had two admissions in Lahore uh, Mental Hospital itself, but that's actually another story altogether. <clears throat> Can yeah, we have the next one? Yeah, but we, we got interested in it because, you know, Mountbatten writes in his diary, yes. uh, in his uh, daily report, that contrary to rumors, the mental hospital will not be partitioned, 1947. But then he adds, in the near future, opening up this whole thing that it will eventually be. Mrs. Mountbatten is so upset by the chaos going on with, the, with Radcliffe that she says, whatever it is, I don't know whether India will be partitioned or not. I know Mountbatten, Lord Mountbatten and me will be admitted to the mental hospital in Lahore. So Lahore mental hospital is very much at the center of this kind of ideas. And there, there are also interesting reports, uh, asides uh, by 
by when the uh, when the riot starts and the violence starts that the mental hospital is being used as a place for torturing people and the government assures them with the, because they now have an ect machine but the government assures them that the people who are doing this are equally hindu and muslim so they should not get worried the hospital that rangoon was that alok mentioned in rangoon which was once a mental hospital is now a prison for political prisoners so this whole interface between madness lunacy and ect and everything else continues to play itself out in the 40s in india then of course uh, we, ind we become independent we discover sanity we become uh, a sane prosperous nation and uh, they are faced with tezpur and alok so tezpur is uh, another fascinating story uh, the chinese aggression the chinese armies the people's liberation army of china enters india and come to a place called bomdila in 1962 and in what is actually one of the biggest intelligence failures of modern india uh, what happens is that the chinese army from bomdila actually turns around and till now it's mysterious as to what is it that happened but the army the chinese army retreats they go back and equally mysteriously the the government in delhi doesn't seem to know about it so the prime minister uh, pandit nehru at this point of time gives an address a dunkirk like address saying you know the chinese armies have come assam has fallen which is obviously not true because the chinese army has retreated actually at this point of time and says you know we will fight we will fight and we will reclaim and don't worry and all of that but what the, the chinese army has retreated so they are not anywhere near tezpur at this point of time but there is total and utter panic in tezpur the whole city of tezpur is evacuated the city of tezpur becomes completely empty the the civil servants the magistrates the bank managers everybody leaves tezpur what is it that is left it's the mental hospital and one man who is the superintendent of the mental hospital is called nani bordoloi so bordoloi is the superintendent of the mental hospital amongst all these fleeing civil servants bordoloi is the one man to cover himself with glory he puts the staff of the hospital and the families of the staff in a bus and sends them off to shillong he releases the people from the mental hospital very reminiscent of what happens in rangoon tadagale in rangoon and the people in the hospital are released they are out on the streets of tezpur meanwhile what is happening is everybody is left by the way you know what happened in the bank is that they burn the currency and they throw the coins into the lake uh, in in the center of tezpur where children next day collect them but now is this situation where the city is is completely empty dr bordoloi is in the all india radio station giving broadcast he has commandeered the all india radio station and he is giving addresses saying you know everything is fine there are no uh, chinese people here there is no chinese army everything is okay there is nothing to worry about the the situation is calm and the stu and the patients from the mental hospital are on the streets of tezpur they are wandering the streets of tezpur and quite rightly they believe and they understand that the their liberty is because of the chinese so the streets of tezpur are resounding to the fact that these people are walking around the streets saying china is in dabad and in the all india radio there is a uh, dr bordoloi who is saying you know everything is okay so it's quite a kafkaesque situation but bordoloi can i have the next one is the first psychiatrist in india to be awarded the padma shri which uh, dr radhakrishnan uh, the then president uh, bestows uh, on him so i think that's the last one sanjeev i think so and yeah. i thank you very much uh, so we stop uh, but just, here no, but just to bring up this for no, 
Now, Tezpur is a fascinating hospital because it is set up in 1876 on what is perhaps at that point of time, a uniquely picturesque spot, literally a bend in the Brahmaputra. The Brahmaputra flows around it. Now it doesn't, now it flows quite some distance away. And from, it started out in huts, actually in huts, because the doctors say that we have to live like the patients. So they have huts, then they have cement walls, then they have, and year by year, you can see it getting more and more complex. Lots of things happen. It's very cosmopolitan because there are tea workers, there are Britishers, there are uh, you know tea estate owners, all kinds of things. There's uh, there are rates of admissions which go up and down. The partition of Bengal happens, so Tezpur is to be merged into East Bengal. Then it is taken over again, and then the whole of Bengal. Uh, Tezpur is moved back into Assam, and uh, so Tezpur is supposed to be the asylum for East Bengal. But then Bengal is remerged with West Bengal, and all the patients in the whole of Bengal are now moved to Ranchi. So when the part when the partition happens, what was then East Pakistan has no mental hospital at all. But still, a government official is sent all the way to Tezpur to identify now inverted commas Pakistanis to be transferred from Tezpur to Pakistan. Although Pakistan of that region has no mental hospital. So where would a Bengali-speaking or Assamese-speaking patient from Assam have gone for psychiatric care in East Pakistan is not, a, is not a concern of the administration at all. They make a list. They don't trust the doctors to do this well. So a special clerk is sent down from Delhi to make a list of all these people. And over 18 months, he identifies all the people who have now become Pakistani to be transferred into Pakistan. Where in Pakistan, they have no idea whether they are sent all the way to Karachi, which is the only mental hospital, or somewhere in in, in, West, in uh, East Pakistan, where there is a prop. We don't know if there's a Vidya Sagar alike in Dhaka or Khulna or Pabna who sets up a Sanjeev. hospital in tents. Sanjeev. We have no idea. Sanjeev, yeah. I think we have uh, overshot our time quite spectacularly. So there we are. As, as usual. So uh, we are now 8.50. <laughs> Yeah, Maybe. within time, sir. Within time. So within time. Okay. <laughs> so that's where we end with 60. Uh, we won't bother you about the state of the asylum and during the emergency, but that's a separate story in itself. Okay. You can stop the slide sharing now. I can stop it. Right. How do I stop share? Right. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. It was like a, we were moving through a movie and like a, a 3D, 3D ride that we have. The joy rights that we have, it was one of those experiences. Thank you so much, Sanjeev, sir, Alok, sir. Over to chairpersons for their opening remarks. Uh, I would say that it's been very interesting travel through time and the bygone lanes of psychiatry. In the era, I had an opportunity with Dr. Alok to be a part of the Nimhans series of webinar when we presented the histories of various middle islands. And here in Goa, the Portuguese, due to Portuguese rule, more or less similar developments, but a bit different way than Britishers. So we had that time. And uh, now we have the interesting that interest that has been from right from uh, in the 70s, mid 18th century, where then the Delhi hospital, then came the Germany versus London Second World War and medical superintendents being Indians then, and then the partition and various areas, how how is mental ill have been cared for or left to be uncared for, you can say. So, and then Tejpur came in and as Dr. Sanjeev said, there's more to tell during the emergencies and the later developments that happened. Uh, and I would now request Dr. Rupinder if any remarks you want to make. It's been very, very interesting, very, very, we were absorbed totally into the talks by two eminent speakers today. Sir, please unmute. Rupinder, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ashish. A roller coaster drive through the history of psychiatry in India. Very, very fascinating. I would like to congr congratulate both the speakers. It was so interesting that I wanted it to continue. And if they overshot any time, another one hour would also be not enough for it. Thank you so much. Thank you.
थैंक यू सो मच सर सर आई थिंक वी विल नीड वन मोर सेशन अमृत इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन फॉर डॉक्टर संजीव जैन सर हाउ कुड शिफ्ट फ्रॉम जेनेटिक्स टू हिस्ट्री इट वाज लाइक टू पैरेलल स्टोरीज रनिंग टुगेदर वन द वॉर एंड द मेंटल डेवलपमेंट सो सो दैट्स इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन हाउ डिड यू शिफ्ट फ्रॉम जेनेटिक्स टू हिस्ट्री सर जेनेटिक्स इज हिस्ट्री ऑन अ जियोलॉजिकल स्केल आफ्टर ऑल वी ऑल इवॉल्व ग्रेजुअली ओवर टाइम <laughs> what we think of social history is only a thousand years our dna is the same for millions of years so it's just a matter of time so genetics is history we have recently published a paper on neanderthal genomes in dna of patients with schizophrenia from india so so if we can if we can go back to neanderthal times in our genetics <coughs> we can go back 100 years for our clinical work so it's it's actually the same there is no difference between genetics and history right both are seeking the roots <laughs> both are both are roots yeah both are roots, roots. <laughs> complements i think there is a question by dr mokan hari okay. thank you so thank you so much sir first of all i must thank to dr sanjeev and dr alok sarin to show us so so great explanation and with the with the uh, sense of history uh, my my request is that if you can we can uh, start this this uh, continue this series with the zone wise uh, uh, you know uh, centers of india then it will be you know much uh, interesting and today's session you know it should have been a little more uh, longer than that which had, uh, which we had but it was so interesting i must thank both the doctors for uh, doing so much research and so much hectic work thank you so much sir thank you thank you so much thank you thank you very much uh, it's 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 heartening to see that so many people are interested and so many people have actually managed uh, uh, to stick around for the whole one hour thank you very much um or she in answer to your also. question that uh, that will uh, that will need much more work and uh, and perhaps another uh, uh, session by itself so demand yeah. for is also there part 2 part 2 awaited already you can see you can see the chat box <laughs> and uh, we can and right I... behind dr zain and alok i, I really appreciate the thing. amount of effort don't mind it you must have put in Uh, both of you must both of you must have been burned many an hour to uh, present such a lucid account of what happened in the past years really commendable thank you so much uh, sir a slightly off track question if you are okay with it sure. uh, regarding ims uh, what happened to ims later on oh that is a very fascinating issue now as you know we are ruled by the ias we are yeah. taxed by the irs we yeah. are governed by the police and you are protected by the army all of which are the same in their bureaucratic structure and in their administrative structure as the british uh, era and the ifs the, medical, the indian medical service is the only service which was disbanded mm-hmm. yeah in 1948 and against 1948. the yes against the advice of many people that you are you are going to strike at the very root of a pan indian healthcare system and if doctors can't learn from each other and all over india they'll be severely compromised and you will need to have health planning at a national level for various reasons the definers of the first and second five year plans which were basically the industrialists insisted that social welfare and healthcare cannot be the responsibility of the government and therefore we will not allow a medical service to come up and that is what that is it okay so it was economics basically it was not economics politics. it was uh, conjusi politics <laughs> it was conjusi there, there is no there was never any shortage we were the jewel in the crown we were the richest we we contributed the most to the second world war and we contributed 20% of all the cash spent in the second world war came from indian banks so there is no shortage of money we okay. were the jewel in the crown 
and a jewel cannot ever become poor. The poverty was in our minds and in our hearts. Okay. Okay. That is a story which needs to be told huh? because it is the yes. only central service. The forest service, the foreign service, the Everything. revenue service, the police service, the every other the central duty. service continued unchanged. Yeah, actually, sir, we tried to write to the government from IMA side from there, but there was no, no response. <laughs> that that <laughs> ship sailed. You know, many years, Long seventy years, five years Long ago. Man. It was broken <laughs> when it was a backbone. Yes. So, sir, uh, whatever we have discussed today, uh, uh, what uh, what a new student of psychiatry should should learn from it. Should uh, what is the uh, gist of the presentation? How how we proceeded? If you can, if you can re-summarize it once more. <laughs> See, this is this is like a trailer because you know all every everybody in India knows East India Company came. We had 1857, we had First World War, Second World War, and partition and 62 China. So we have pegged it to these events. But to document how Indian doctors participated in psychiatry, how Chetan Shah is trying to do psychotherapy in Peshawar in 1876. 1876 is the first time psychotherapy is attempted. With a, with a, a title, the title of the paper is Psychotherapy in, in Peshawar. Hysteria is recognized. Doctors are trained. Psych psychological assessment at dispensary clinics in Gujarat and Peshawar and Srinagar occurs. And of course, in Sakleshpur and Chennai and Cochin and everything. So this, the the churning of ideas and the, by, time, by the time Indian doctors start writing, the first Indian member of the Royal College is in 1888, who is the grandfather of General Nagesh, the, the army, uh, the vice chair of the Indian army, who retired about 10 years ago. So his grandfather is the first psychiatrist from India who become a member of the Royal College. But by the time 1920s come, Dunji Boy, Berkeley Hill, Parsuram, Noronha, they're writing prolifically to Lancet, British Journal of Psychiatry, trying new drugs, doing ECT, giving insulin coma, metrazole coma, writing about Freud. So the intellectual change in the practice of psychiatry is very intense. And what we need to understand is that Indian psychiatry is not merely a third world psychiatry. It has participated completely so, you know, for example, when, when you read accounts of mental hospitals of America in California and Western part of America, they are regularly reading mental hospital reports from India to tell them how to manage the mentally ill. Just like we read AJP now, that time they are reading the Indian asylum reports because we have more asylums than America has. We have more experience in handling mentally ill people than America has at that point of time in the early 19th century. So we should not think of psychiatry in India as being uniquely uh, backward or third world psychiatry. We have been participant, participants of everything that has happened in psychiatry in the last 200 years. And psychiatry is only 200 years. Philip Pinel, after the French Revolution, which Alok Sarin mentioned, modern psychiatry starts after Pinel. And by that time, the mental hospitals were there in India too. And they're being governed by the same rules of Pinel and Esquirol. So we have, so psychiatry in India is as modern as anywhere else in the world. Okay. So there's an interesting question, chat box. Uh, was there any indigenous mental health institution or system of treatment other than modern psychiatry in the pre-independence period? As you all know, Professor Verma writes about the mental hospital in Mandu. I forget the name of the Hakim who's supposed to run it. I'm, I forget the name right now. Um, but there is a mental hospital in Mandu, which is supposed to have existed. There are older accounts which are literary or quasi-historical from the a thousand years ago that hospitals were established by rich merchants for the sake of the poor. There is uh, in, in Goa, of course, Garcia de Orta's hospital uh, helped by Agnes and Muntapa, his gardener and his maid. Uh, 
wrote the first textbook of medicine uh, and uh, was quite famous because he was learning from local healers. But the divisions of the Indian society would not allow patients to be next to each other from different religions and different castes. So that opportunity was opened up only by the British hospitals. And as a matter of principle, they said, our hospitals will never have different food or services depending on religion or caste. Although in Madras, they had a Brahmin cook. In Bangalore, they had a Lingayat cook. But more or less, uh, the basic facilities of hospital were completely non-denominational. And that proved extremely popular. In Bangalore, from a total population of one and a half lakh, one lakh people had come to the Bangalore uh, municipal dispensary. One lakh out of one and a half lakh people had visited in one year. So the poor people went to these hospitals without any problem. It was the rich who did not go to the hospital because they believed in their own religious healing. But for the poor and the dispossessed, the British hospitals proved a real, a real benefit. Okay, thank you, sir. Amrit, any questions uh, we have? Because we have a lot of congrats. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of comment, comments. I think it's pre Diwali, so I should. I think we should give everybody a break. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mohan sir is, uh, is there if he wants to add something uh, 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 sir if you can hear us no I don't we'll, we'll, we'll. Uh, sir please unmute muted yes thank you very much uh, Amrit uh, as always it has been a great pleasure to listen to Sanjeev and uh, Alok, uh, you know, it has been a great journey listening to both of them. Uh, 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 I take your point that, uh, you know, pre Diwali, not too much of question and not too much of discussion. But I just want to highlight the point which uh, Sanjeev mentioned that, uh, you know, we were the jewel in the crown. We don't, uh, we have to get that out of our mindset that we were poor, we didn't know this, we did uh, this, etc., etc. And uh, those of you who have listened to Shashi Tharoor, I'm mentioning Shashi Tharoor because he famously lost the uh, election just a few days ago. He has talked about uh, in great detail about uh, all the things which Sanjeev was mentioning. Sanjeev was uh, mentioning that all most of the money which went for the war from Britain went, went from Indian banks, etc. A lot of this information is available, but I think what we have to do is to get this out of our mindset. I want to also highlight the point that, uh, you know, we were never a third world psychiatry. Uh, you know, the large number of uh, people who contributed to all those, uh, uh, you know, conversations in the best of the journals, etc. At that time, many of us are not even aware of that. So I just wanted to highlight that point And I want to also mention that it's been a great pleasure to uh, uh, listen to both of them. I just wanted to uh, tell Alok, Alok was saying that so many people are interest, uh, interested in uh, history and they are staying on for one hour. Uh, you know, you started at 8 o'clock and must be it is 9.15 or 9.30. But here in Perth, uh, this is two and a half hours ahead of your time. So I'm, uh, you can show, you can <laughs> probably know the interest. It's uh, maybe uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when you started at 8 o'clock, it was at 10.30 here. You know, so uh, it, it is good to know that a lot of people are interested and uh, even now more than 100 people are actually listening to you. Back to you, Amrit. Thank you very much for asking me to make a comment. I think you wanted to check whether I was sleeping or not. I was <laughs> not. Never... <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, the comment, please. You are a great inspiration for us. Uh, final comments on the chairpersons, then we go to Tofan Pati, sir. I would say let's uh, leash from here, let's do good work, and maybe our good work gets written and becomes a history added to the presentation today in times to come. All the very best to everybody. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. I am speechless. No comments. It was so good. Thank you so much, both of you.
Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Kofan, sir. Very much. Thank you. And thank you for inviting us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Dr. Kapoor, Dr. Asis, Dr. Jain, and my dear friend, Dr. Sarin, whom I interacted after a long time, but old dear friend. I will make three points. Point number one. History is very important for us, our psychiatric students, to feel, make them feel that we really ruled the world and we have the capacity to do this. They have to be happy and proud of their ancestors. And they have to also know how much, maybe in a way, we had been marginalized as a discipline because they are going to fight in the future. For the discipline of psychiatry. Point number one. Point number two, while discussing about this topic with Dr. Arok Sarin, I promised him that I shall give him a, a, a report of the sale of Finsel in Katak Jail. Yes. I could not get a photo of that CA, but I have traced the article which will reach me and I shall share it with you few and Dr. Sarin. Very nice. And that is related to my third point. My third point is that we will be having soon uh, the second part of this presentation. It's my personal request as well as the request of many people in the chat box. <laughs> and before that, I shall give the document that has been published twice in the Journal of History. I shall get it from that, not in our zone. But I shall get that, I have asked it. And because in the last few days I had been struggling a lot for obvious reasons, I could not focus in my place. But I shall give it to you alone. I remember. And third point is the most important last part of the list. We'll have a next session. <laughs> sure, sir, definitely. Public demand is there. Huge public demand. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Amrit, please wind up the session. Happy Diwali. Happy Diwali, everyone. And Happy Diwali. Thank you so much for coming. It was a riveting, it was enthralling, and it was absolutely you know, educative. So thank you so much for weaving in both parts of history mental history, you know, psychiatry, history of psychiatry, and we will have a second edition. Thank you, Dr. Ashish and Dr. Rupinder Kapoor for chairing the session and being as good as you can be as a chairperson with such brilliant speakers. Thank you, Tufan, sir. Thank you, IPS Odisha State Bank. Thank you, Torrent. And thank you to all our viewers who unfailingly, loyally, with its 115 episodes is not less. Even though COVID is gone, it's the peak of, you know, any day, you, we had more than 290 logins today, the peak of 215. And that, that's on it. And, you know, me and Alim were discussing, yeah, I thought I'd come. I don't know, no chance. After, after Alim start, uh, stops speaking, you know, the crowd comes in. So, Sanjeev, sir, Alok, sir, thank you so much. Have a great Diwali. We'll see you again. Thank you so much. Safe Diwali. Happy Diwali. Happy Diwali. Happy Diwali. Thank you so much. And the pinnacle is looking the youngest. Mark, 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 Mark,